All right, Turing completeness is overrated. If you think Turing completeness is the be all end all, I'm here to disabuse you of that notion. It is often said in online discourse that languages which aren't Turing complete are somehow not real programming languages. That's completely false. And here's why. Cast your mind back 100 years or so, beginning of the 20th century, David Hilbert sets out a grand plan for mathematics to unify and axiomatize mathematics. Kurt Gödel, second guy along, has other ideas, as you may know. His incompleteness theorem comes along and says, sorry about that. <coughs> Alonzo Church, meanwhile, and Alan Turing are working on their own ideas. Uh, and in, 1930, in the 30s, uh, Alonzo Church is working on lambda calculus. Alan Turing is working on what will become Turing machines. And um, Alonzo Church forms lambda calculus, but then his two grad students go on to show, uh, he forms it as trying to make a system of logic. Uh, Rosser and Claney show that it's inconsistent, which means there are statements you can make in the untyped lambda calculus which lead to a derivation of both x and not x. This is clearly bad for a system of logic. <coughs> okay, so that's pretty bad. Then comes another bombshell. Well, actually, so the reason they found it was inconsistent is quite famous, and it's the Y combinator. This is what makes untyped lambda calculus inconsistent. Then in 1936 comes another bombshell. Whoa! Uh, Turing and Church prove that recursive functions from Gödel and untyped lambda calculus and Turing machines are all equivalent. And we know this today, they're all equivalent models of computation. By the way, it took them a while to convince Kurt Gödel. Um, but these are all equivalent, and therefore they're all inconsistent. So we've got a problem here, right? And uh, the problem is similar to the Russell paradox, right? So the Y combinator allows self-reference in the same way that the Russell paradox allows sets to contain sets. The fix for the Russell paradox in some sense is to introduce a hierarchy of sets so that sets cannot contain sets. And the fix for the inconsistency is to introduce types in the lambda calculus. So we get the simply typed lambda calculus. So basically we're in this position where you can either have a language which can express anything you can compute, but suffers from this undecidable halting problem, or you can have something that can't express every computation, but it's consistent and it always halts. Now, while this is happening, uh, Haskell Curry notices this correspondence between functions and logical implication. And he develops this, and later on, William Alvin Howard uh, helps this, and you notice this photo is color. It takes until about 1970 to flesh this out properly. But the Curry-Howard correspondence establishes that mapping between logical propositions and or implication and types. And this is, you know, the foundation of pro functional programming languages today. And so this is what we have from functional languages. When you write a program in a functional language, uh, you, are, you are establishing a proposition. When you write a function, the function signature is the proposition, it's the implication proposition. And the, the proposition is that there is a value that will inhabit this type. I can write this function. When you write the function, you are proving the proposition. And, you know, so with sub-Turing languages, they're actually quite useful. You're not giving up a whole lot. You're giving up principally the inconsistency, the ability to make recursion and unbounded loops, you still get structural recursion, you still get types, you still get things like list comprehensions, and there are a lot of common domains that sub languages can attack and very, very nicely uh, figure out, like parser, state machines, config, query languages. So the theoretical power that is Turing completeness often isn't necessary. And you know, you've probably noticed in recent years that C++ is very much uh, following sort of functional paradigms. We're seeing them crop up more and more. This is what people mean when they talk about algebraic data types. The algebra is logic through the Curry-Howard correspondence. <coughs> and spoiler, all data types are algebraic, not just 
optional and variant. <laughs> um, so the worst state of affairs you can find yourself in, of course, is accidental Turing completeness, which we all know applies to many things. You know, you can go online and find lists of these. Many things in C++ alone are accidentally Turing complete, and that's the worst state of affairs. So the next time you make a language, a DSL, or a general purpose language, consider consciously avoiding Turing completeness. Because if you are proud of Turing completeness, this is what you're saying. You're saying, I've weighed the options. I've decided it's important for my language to have foot guns, because that's how people get things done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>